NASA SLS successfully lifted off in fall 2022, but the agency still buys up to five Falcon Heavy launches. The first happened last week with the Psyche mission to the bizarre metal asteroid. More importantly, while NASA declared SLS is unaffordable for Falcon Heavy, they said, it's an incredible capability for our nation. We're fortunate to have it. Why? What SpaceX Falcon Heavy just did totally shocked NASA scientists. Welcome back to today's episode of TechMap. Before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX's powerful Falcon Heavy rocket successfully launched last Friday morning, carrying a NASA mission bound for a distant asteroid. Targeting the asteroid Psyche, the eponymous NASA mission is flying a spacecraft about the width of a tennis court on a journey of almost six years and about 2.2 billion miles, arriving at the planetary body in July 2029. The launch took off at 10.19 a.m. from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. NASA wants to study the composition of the asteroid, which the agency describes as an unusual object likely rich in metal. The Psyche spacecraft is armed with a variety of scientific tools, such as instruments for studying the asteroid's magnetic field and chemical makeup. The agency expects to spend about $1.2 billion on the Psyche mission, including the costs of development and operations. Of that total cost, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract of about $131 million to launch the mission. The mission marks SpaceX's eighth launch of its Falcon Heavy rocket the company's most powerful in operation. This mission makes Starship become a workhorse for NASA. And while you feel this is normal, lets me tell you a story. When it was envisioned in 2010, NASA's SLS was tipped to be the world's largest and most powerful rocket, in addition to being extraordinarily cheap and quick to build due to ample use of existing components, such as engines and boosters from the space shuttle program. Back then, the Starship was simply a concept as was the Falcon Heavy, the first attempt at heavy orbital vehicle undertaken by SpaceX and roughly comparable in its payload capacity to the SLS. Then, in 2014, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden uttered a quote that would go on to be ridiculed and memified ever since. Let's be very honest. We don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. Cell S is real. Two years later in 2016, Bolden said he still did not believe commercial companies were up to the task. If you talk about launch vehicles, we believe our responsibility to the nation is to take care of things that normal people cannot do or don't want to do, like large launch vehicles, Bolden said. I'm not a big fan of commercial investment in large launch vehicles just yet. Ironically, NASA and the SLS prime contractor Boeing are no longer competing with the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX beat them too and Falcon Heavy was launched in 2018. Meanwhile, it's not until four years later that SLS can take off. But keep in mind that this launch burned to a total of $23.8 billion in nominal dollars. What a shame. Since that time, a lot has changed. Bolden appears to have changed his mind. In an interview with Politico published in 2020 in the publication Space Newsletter, Bolden was asked what might happen during the next four years. Celes will go away, he said. It could go away during a Biden administration or a next Trump administration because at some point commercial entities are going to catch up. They are really going to build a heavy lift launch vehicle, sort of like SLS, that they will be able to fly for a much cheaper price than NASA can do SLS. That's just the way it works. Bolden remains a popular and influential voice in the space community, but he no longer has a direct say in U.S. space policy. Perhaps because he no longer has to answer to Congress for NASA budgets, he is also free to speak his mind. In any case, his comments reflect the general sentiment in the space community, at least outside of the traditional contractors like Boeing and Northrop Grumman, who directly benefit from SLS development that the SLS rocket will eventually go away. When Congress conceived of the Space Launch System rocket in 2010 and directed NASA to build it, they were making two bets. First, they bet the new space companies, such as SpaceX, would fail. 
This was a reasonable bet back then, as SpaceX had lost most of the rockets it had tried to launch into space. Second, they bet that traditional companies like Boeing would be better at building big rockets. The congressional lawmakers who created SLS, it began with Florida Senator Bill Nelson and Texas Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, and they were soon joined by Alabama Senator Richard Shelby lost both of those bets. So now, NASA is building a large, expendable rocket that has cost taxpayers tens of billions of dollars. Congress remains as committed as ever, both in budgets and public statements of support. However, the more that new rockets fly, the more difficult this support will be to maintain. In short, NASA's SLS rocket is probably proof of the saying, don't count your chicken before they hatch. Besides, there's another significant reason why NASA scientists' shock by SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch is its absurdly low cost. We can directly compare costs between Falcon Heavy and NASA's SLS. And upon direct comparison, the cost disparities are sobering, proving that commercial development of large rockets likely represents the future of the industry. To be fair, NASA SLS will have more lift capacity than the Falcon Heavy 70 tons to low Earth orbit versus 64 tons and a bigger fairing to accommodate flying a wider payload into space. It also will have a more capable upper stage that will be able to send larger payloads into deeper space. However, these improvements come at a very, very steep price. Consider just a single data point. NASA annually spends about a $3 billion to develop the SLS rocket and ground launch systems for the massive rocket at Kennedy Space Center. The SLS rocket was originally supposed to launch in 2017, but the maiden flight of the SLS booster has slipped to 2022. That is understandable. Most large aerospace rockets experience delays. However, the cost of a three-year delay is about a dozen billion at least. For the sake of argument, Consider the costs of this three-year delay against the lift capability NASA could have bought by purchasing Falcon Heavy rockets from SpaceX. That $10 billion equates to 110 launches of the reusable Falcon Heavy or 67 of the expendable version. This provides up to 3,800 tons of lift, the equivalent of 10 international space stations or one heck of a moon base. Obviously, NASA does not need that many launches, but it could buy several Falcon Heavy rockets a year and have the funds to build meaningful payloads to launch on them. In practical terms, NASA has paid nothing for the development of the Falcon Heavy rocket. In fact, by leasing its unused launch complex 39A to SpaceX for Falcon Heavy launches, the space agency has said it saves about $1 million in annual maintenance costs on the historical launch complex. The question is, really... Why would the government continue to spend billions of dollars a year of taxpayer money for a rocket that will be unnecessary and obsolete? Lori Garver, a deputy administrator of NASA from 2009 to 2013, shared. If the U.S. continues this travesty, it will siphon off even more funds NASA could otherwise use for science missions, transfer vehicles, or landers that actually get us somewhere. And that just wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.